Hey, welcome to Horsepower. Today we're bound and determined to finish up our Camaro SS project, one that's going to turn that 98 streetcar into a machine that's custom made for maneuvering the autocross. Yeah, after we're finished, we can take it to track day events where anyone can battle the clock as they test their cars and driving skills through a series of twists and turns. To navigate an autocross in winning times, cars also got to have the right power, suspension, and braking. We jump started this project with subframe connectors for stiffness and a BMR suspension for improved handling. For safety and rigidity, we assembled an auto power roll cage. Then we installed a new K member, Tremec six speed transmission and repurposed LS1 as an assembly from under the car. Your toes clear, Joe? Well, all that work gets us to this, our fuel cell that we're repurposing from a previous project. It's gonna be a lot safer than the factory tank we removed and well, we can plumb our fuel system to and from it pretty easily. To make room for it though, we have to remove the tank used for our air suspension system and mount it on the shelf behind the passenger seat along with the other air suspension components using self-tapping screws. Now we can cut out a large section of the carpet back. And with the fuel cell basket in place, mark around it with a Sharpie. Then carve out the metal section so the basket will clear. Now we can just weld the basket in permanently in place and the fuel cell's got a safe home with plenty of access. But we need one more thing to make this a race-ready fuel cell, and our buddy Chris offered to help us out with that. Down at the muscle car shop, he cuts out a piece of sheet metal to match his measurements. Now we're doing this to seal off the fuel cell area from the driver's compartment. With his metal cut, Chris uses the brake to make 90 degree bends on each end. Back in our shop, he attaches a hardware store piano hinge with pop rivets. And now the cover can be opened easily for refueling and accessing the fuel line fittings. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and route our feed line to the engine. Now we'll start from the bulkhead fitting, use an Earl Superstock hose and attach it to a fuel filter. And we'll connect it to the fast pump, which is rated at 255 liters per hour. From the pump, roll on a hose to the original hard line. While he does that, I can install our new drive shaft from Dynatech. It's got a 31 spline yoke, it's made with high performance racing aluminum, and the 1350U joint is the biggest and stoutest they make for passenger cars. With the car back down, it's time to pull off the carbureted intake and bolt down the fast composite intake, which actually used to live here. We did upgrade the fuel rails with a pair from Aeromotive. This will allow us to make a loop with the entire fuel system. Downstream from the return, we're installing this fuel pressure regulator. Before moving on, we got a little correction to make. Last time after the roll cage, we installed a new Procar seat from SCAT. It sure looked great, but there's one small problem. You see, I'm sitting so high in this thing, there's not enough clearance for a head, much less a helmet. Oh well, our bad. This one's obviously a more passenger car style with a thick bottom cushion, while the Sportsman replacement has a design that puts the driver's bottom close to the floorboard. This seat also has all the proper openings to install a complete five-point harness. This is the factory gauge cluster that came out of our Camaro, and I think we've seen every one of these needles pegged a time or two. Now this is the cluster that's going back in it, and it came from AdFab Designs. The gauges are from Spec, and we'll show you their cool features once we get them wired up. I really like this combination, not only for the looks, but also the way it fits. We used a fast, easy EFI fuel injection system back in the dining room on a late model Hemi and we made 400 horsepower. Now we also fed that motor with a throttle body injection setup like this, but since we're going to that fast composite intake and it's a multi-port setup, we also have to swap to a multi-port harness they also supplied. It installs using all the factory style connectors and we'll mount the fast computer box here where it's easy to access. Then mount a new battery here behind the passenger seat with the help of this Mr. Gasket battery box and cables. The battery is an Optima Red Top rated at 720 cold cranking amps at zero degrees. While Mike's working on that, I went ahead and finished up wiring the gauges, and he was right. They're pretty cool. The first thing you notice about these gauges is how bright and clear they are. That's because they have high-intensity LEDs with seven different color schemes and brightness control. 
You can dial these gauges in for a high red line setting, a low yellow line setting, and even a green sweet spot setting. It's also got a pit row setting for the track, and that's why you see them all over NASCAR. We've got a lot of wiring to handle before we're finished with this thing, not to mention headers, exhaust, and a few other details. We'll take care of that after hours. But very soon, we're going to take you and the Camaro to an autocross event, see how it competes against the clock, and show you how you can get involved in this fast-growing solo motorsport. Well, we've got a lot more, so stay with us. Hey, we're back with a question for you. Why are LS engines, like the one we put in our Camaro there, so popular for performance projects on the street? Well, it could be because they make plenty of power, they're lightweight, efficient, and since they've been around a while, well, they're pretty affordable in case you want to repurpose one for, say, a street ride or muscle car project. However, to get one to fit in the hole of something like this Monte Carlo here, man, you're in for a lot of fabricating motor mounts, uh, trying to get the tranny to line up with the cross member, not to mention tight tolerances, especially back here. Another problem you'll have is with the stock accessory drive. It mounts the AC compressor on the lower Perfect. passenger side, so the frame rails of most older cars are in the way. And the power steering pump and steering box are fighting for space with no winner. Here's the solution to getting the engine in the proper location. It's Hooker's new LS engine mounts that are designed to locate the LS engine in the same exact location as a smaller big block. And if you remember correctly, we had a big block in the Monte Carlo last. These pieces are made of 3 8 rolled steel, and they're precision machined for perfect alignment. After installing them on the block, you just bolt the stock motor mount shells to the new mount using the supplied hardware. Concept One now makes this Victory Series system designed to keep all the components within the boundaries of the block. Now they make them for all LS applications and most Gen 3s. The kit comes with these factory style gaskets with O-rings for the Edelbrock water pump, which we'll bolt up first. Anytime you're putting fasteners into aluminum, you want to make sure you put anti-seize on all the threads. Next thing to go on is this bracket for the alternator and power steering, and another for the AC compressor. Now the fluid damper balancer can go on, followed by the crank pulley, and this pulley for the water pump. Using a spacer for belt alignment, we can install the lightweight Delphi power steering pump. This is a Concept One exclusive, which saves space thanks to a pump-mounted CNC machine mini reservoir. Then with the help of two more brackets, we can bolt up this 105 amp Power Master alternator. The cooling fan bolts directly to the alternator, followed by the alternator pulley, secured with a lock washer and nut. Now with its arm bracket in place, we can bolt up the AC compressor, and then the tensioner. The compressor is an ultra small sand and SD7 that works with Concept One's billet manifold. Last but not least, we can route the gator back belt used to spin all the pulleys. This is not only a more compact way to drive accessories, come back, with all that trick billet, it looks a lot better too. Now there's ample clearance between the engine and the firewall, the power steering pulley clears, and in this new location, so does the compressor. So it looks like a good way to go LS without a bunch of BS. We'll be back after the break. We're back and check out the bumblebee that just landed in our shop. It's a 73 Camaro Z28 that belongs to a friend of ours. This guy went all out to make a statement at the weekend cruise ends, not only with that screaming paint job, he also rose in on killer wheels with huge machine lifts. While he sits on a cockpit decorated with old school custom tweed interior, even a mini me bumblebee riding in the back. And when he pops the hood, his engine bay gets plenty of attention too with those painted valve covers, copious amounts of chrome, and even some cool carbon fiber up front. While it's here, we're gonna put it to good use, showing you how you can pump up the appearance and power of your engine without pumping your money well dry. It doesn't take an aeronautics expert to know that bringing in cold air from the outside creates a denser charge for better performance. That's what this kit here from Spectre is all about. This power pack system comes with two heat shields, filters, 
this low profile plenum and a pair of massive inlet tubes, plus boots and all the hardware you need. In fact, this is a perfect first mod for a tight budget. These little support bars look cool, but we have to get them out of the way for now to install the heat shields. But first, while we have the room, we'll put the filters down here for the time being, then install the shields. No drilling needed here, they install in existing bolt holes. Now this huge air cleaner can go. No wonder it's so large, it's hiding a pretty ugly carb. Obviously this is not part of the kit's installation, but we're going to upgrade to some four barrel bling with this Holly Ultralight. Same 670 CFM flow rate as the old one, worlds of parts and look. Next we can clamp the filters to the inlet tubes. Then route and secure the tubes to the plenum. And the best feature might be the price. The Spectre kit we install goes for about 380 bucks in the Summit Racing catalog. Well, stick around, we'll be right back. You're watching Horsepower. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Horsepower collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Hey, welcome back to the shop. If you're like a lot of car guys and gals we know today, well, you like it both ways. The classic show of something like this 72 Chevelle with some of the go you get for more modern technology. Well, we got something for this car's 350 that's going to give it better throttle response, better idle characteristics, better fuel economy, and an end to those cold start issues. Check this. It's a self-tuning TBI Avenger system from Holly with everything you need to replace that old carburetor, including the wiring harness, sensors, an inline fuel pump, ECU, and this little handheld controller that handles all the setup. That's right, no laptop needed. You will need to fab up your own fuel return line for your application, so let's go ahead and take care of all the fuel system modifications now. With the battery disconnected and car elevated, you need to loosen the fuel tank and lower it. Since this car has two vent lines, we're going to use one of them as our fuel return line. Although you want to use as much hard line as possible in the fuel system, the Earl Superstock hose we're using for connections has a special liner that makes it more tolerant to pump gas blends. Now just remove and discard the old fuel lines that run from the tank. Here's what goes in place of the stock mechanical fuel pump. The kit's electric pump with pre and aft filters. While we're under here, we can also connect the O2 sensor. Now the kit comes with a bung, but if you don't have a welder, just take it to a local muffler shop. The throttle body fits all standard square flange intake manifolds with a gasket between it and the manifold. It installs with the IAC motor facing toward the front. Because the linkage for the fuel injection is the same used with the carburetor, we can keep and reinstall our original throttle and kick down bracket. Of course, you always want to check to see there's plenty of free, unobstructed movement. We're next, we're installing the supply and return lines to the throttle body using Earl Speed Flex with a Teflon inner lining. Now the map sensor gets installed as close as possible to a full vacuum port. After pulling the harness through the firewall, we're mounting our ECU above the glove box and under the dash. It has provisions for three harness plug-ins. By the way, this unit's fully potted, which means it's fully sealed to protect it from the elements. Next, we can handle all the main harness connections. Each connector is clearly labeled to make this process pretty simple. Since the ECU needs to see a tack signal, we're going to pull ours from the distributor. It's critical that power and ground leads from fuel injection systems connect directly to the battery. While the fuel pressure is preset at the factory, it on. it's always a good idea to check it yourself for extra peace of mind. Looks good. Now it's time to let the controller do its job. For you, that simply means following the prompts, and in a few minutes, you'll be ready to roll. So now, all you have to do is drive the car while the computer self-adjusts. Of course, this conversion's not about increasing horsepower, but part of the payoff is better throttle response. Yeah! And to 
more you drive, the more the computer self-tunes. That means better fuel efficiency. All right. Coming to a stop, and we're idling at 750 RPM, nice and smooth. Perfect, but if it wasn't, we wanted to change it. Controller can handle that, too. The Holley TVI Avenger system we install goes for about two grand, and sure makes a grand old classic like this Chevelle a lot better tuned street machine. One that's a lot more fun to drive, too, and having fun's what it's all about. No doubt about it, Outlaw Drag Racing is the real deal when it comes to get down, heads up competition. For the racer, there are several eighth mile classes to match his need for speed and his budget. Index classes are a great way to seriously compete without a big wad of cash. Here in the 530 class, racers leaf together on a pro tree and fight to finish as close to five and a half seconds as possible without breaking out. Of course, it takes a car with a killer combination to compete and win, like Eric Gillett's Camaro here with those unmistakable old school graphics. Now, he's running a 565 cubic inch big block with dark aluminum block, heads, and intake. And he's also using a comp solid roller with their lifters and belt drive. Under the valve covers, Jessel shaft mounted rocker arms. His engine's backed up with a TCI Power Glide. And to help plant the power to the pavement, Eric runs Phoenix 1733 drag slicks. Eric just stepped up from the 6.0 index class to this faster 530 class. What kind of consideration went into tire choice? Consistency is key when running an index. With the higher horsepower car, we needed a tire that could calm down the effects of the violent power in the launch. The 1733 is a natural choice for marginal tracks that we run into in hot weather throughout the season. Okay, well this guy looks similar, but uh, what's the difference here? This is a PH56R, also known as a 1432 radial. Uh, the primary benefits with a radial tire is that you can run a higher tire pressure which will result in lower ETs. And this is really important in classes such as super stock, comp eliminator. A lot of science to this tire stuff. Do you guys have more uh, applications coming down the pike? Absolutely. We're working on a line of Outlaw 10.5 tires with stiff sidewalls, primarily for high horsepower, uh, high weight applications. We're also taking a look at some big tire programs. Uh, such as the 1734.6s used in nostalgia fuel cars, top dragsters, uh, pro mods, cars of that application. Well, you got your work cut out for you inside and outside the car. Good luck at the track, and hey, I'll see you at the races. And we'll see you next time.